Let me share with you a few tips for getting started on a machine learning project. This video will be a little bit of a grab bag of different ideas, but I hope nonetheless, many of these ideas will be useful to you. We've talked about how machine learning is an iterative process where you start with a model, data, hyperparameters, train the model, carry out error analysis, and then use that to drive further improvements. And after you've done this a few times, gone around the loop enough times, when you have a good enough model, you might then carry out a final performance audit before taking it to production. In order to get started on this first step of coming up with a model, here are some suggestions. When I'm starting on a machine learning project, I almost always start with a quick literature search to see what's possible. So you can look at online courses, look at blogs, look at open source projects. And my advice to you, if your goal is to build a practical production system and not to do research is don't obsess about finding the latest, greatest algorithm. Instead, spend half a day, maybe a small number of days reading blog posts and pick something reasonable that lets you get started quickly. If you can find an open source implementation, that can also help you establish a baseline more efficiently. I find that for many practical applications, a reasonable algorithm with good data will often do just fine and will in fact outperform a great algorithm with not so good data. So don't obsess about taking the algorithm that was just published in some conference last week that is the most cutting edge algorithm. Instead, find something reasonable, find a good open source implementation and use that to get going quickly. Because being able to get started on this first step of this loop can make you more efficient in iterating through more times and that will help you get to good performance more quickly. Second question I've often been asked is, hey Andrew, do I need to take into account deployment constraints, such as compute constraints, when picking a model? My answer is yes, you should take deployment constraints, such as compute constraints, into account if the baseline is already established and you're relatively confident that this project will work and thus your goal is to build and deploy a system. But if you've not yet even established a baseline, or if you're not yet sure if this project will work and be worthy of deployment, then I would say no, or maybe not necessarily. And if you are in a stage of the project where your first goal is to just establish a baseline and determine what is possible, and if this project is even worth pursuing for the long term, then it might be okay to ignore deployment constraints and just find some open source implementation and try it out to see what might be possible, even if that open source implementation is so computationally intensive that you know you will never be able to deploy that. Of course, no harm taking deployment constraints into account as well at this phase of the project, but it might also be okay if you don't and focus on more efficiently establishing the baseline first. Finally, when trying out the learning algorithm for the first time, before running it on all your data, I would urge you to run a few quick sanity checks for your code and your algorithm. For example, I will usually try to overfit a very small training data set before spending hours or sometimes even overnight or days training the algorithm on the large data set. Maybe even try to make sure you can fit one training example, especially if the output is a complex output. For example, I was once working on a speech recognition system where the goal was to input audio and have a learning algorithm output a transcript. When I trained my algorithm on just one example, one audio clip, when I trained my speech recognition system on just one audio clip on the training set, which is just one audio clip, my system outputs this, it outputs space, 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 space. So clearly it wasn't working. And because my speech system couldn't even accurately transcribe one training example, there wasn't much point to spending hours and hours training it on a giant training set. Or for image segmentation, if your goal is to take as input pictures like this and segment out the cats in the image, 
then before spending hours training your system on hundreds or thousands of images, a worthy sanity check would be to feed it just one image and see if it can at least overfit that one training example before scaling up to a larger data set. And the advantage of this is you may be able to train your algorithm on one or a small handful of examples in just minutes or maybe even seconds, and this lets you find bugs much more quickly. Finally, for image classification problems, even if you have 10,000 images or 100,000 images or a million images in your training set, it might be worthwhile to very quickly train your algorithm on a small subset of just 10 or maybe 100 images because you can do that quickly. And if your algorithm can't even do well on 100 images, well then it's clearly not going to do well on 10,000 images. So this would be another useful sanity check for your code. Now, after you've trained a machine learning model, after you've trained your first model, one of the most important things is how do you carry out error analysis to help you decide how to improve the performance of your algorithm. Let's go on to the next video to dive into error analysis and performance auditing.